In this video, we're going to derive a relationship between the number of samples that a sampling algorithm needs to approximate a value and the accuracy of the approximation. Let's give a very concrete example problem. Let's assume that we have n objects of which k are special, and we wish to approximate the value k by randomly sampling from m and using the sample ratio as an approximation for the actual ratio k over n. How many samples m do we need to ensure that our approximation is good? First, we need to formulate what we mean by a good approximation. We will use a common formulation in computer science known as the epsilon delta approximation. So an algorithm is an epsilon delta good approximation algorithm if the approximate values that it outputs differ from the correct value in absolute terms by an amount greater than epsilon percent of the correct value. If the probability of that inequality is less than delta, then the algorithm is an epsilon delta good approximation algorithm. So therefore, under this formulation, an algorithm is a good approximation algorithm when the probability that it produces a large error, as given by epsilon, is smaller than some probability given by delta. For the sampling problem we just discussed, we now want to derive how m, the number of samples necessary, depends on n and k, and also epsilon and delta. To derive this relationship, we will use a Chernoff bound for the binomial random variable. The Chernoff bound of a random variable gives us an upper bound on the probability that the random variable deviates from its expected value. Our sampling procedure generates a binomial random variable because it is the sum of n independent Bernoulli trials, or coin flips, with probability of success equal to k over n. Since we know our sampling procedure generates a binomial random variable, we can immediately calculate the expected value of our sampling procedure, which will be m times k over n, and we can also directly use the following Chernoff bound for the probability that a binomial random variable deviates from its expectation. So the particular form of the Chernoff bound that we're using states that the probability that a binomial random variable deviates in absolute terms from its expected value by an amount greater than epsilon times the expected value is exponentially small. So we can directly plug in our variables of interest into this inequality and then know to have an epsilon delta good approximation algorithm we require that the probability of error be less than delta or in other words delta must be less than or equal to the right hand side expression of the Chernoff bound. We can then use simple algebra to isolate m and give a lower bound for m in terms of our other variables of interest, namely n, k, epsilon, and delta. So one thing that this inequality tells us is that if n is exponentially large relative to k, then we will require an exponentially large number of samples. So in summary, we can use basic probability theory to look at the relationship between computational cost in terms of the number of samples required and the goodness of our approximation in an algorithm that uses sampling to approximate a value that would otherwise require exponential computational resources to compute.